Hey folks, David Stewart here. Time for some more Storycraft. Today, we're going to be talking about redemption arcs, which are in a lot of ways the inverse of tragedies. Now, before I go any further, you can get my newest book, DBNX Machina, for free by joining my mailing list, dbspress.com slash free dash book that'll put you on the mailing list and get you a free copy of the book. I also have a new album out called Return from David V. Stewart's Zool, so you can check that out on your favorite streaming service. If you buy it from Bandcamp, you will get a free copy of Afterglow Generation Y, book I came out with last year. Anyway, let's talk about redemption arcs. Um, I said they're the inverse of a tragedy. A tragedy is about the downfall of a good character, a noble character. And a redemption story is about the ennobling of a bad character. So a character who's villainous, who's evil, who's in some way uh, not meeting standards, becoming good. Now, that can include a triumph. They could become a hero, but not necessarily. Um, there's many, many examples. I'm going to give you probably the best and most common example I can give you and uh, maybe in the history of writing in a second. But the most important thing about writing a redemption arc is that it has to start as a bad character. The character has to be evil in some way or uh, be bad in some way. So they have to be, you know, you could write a story about a, a neat becoming like an alpha or something. That is still a redemption story. And it's not that he's evil, like sitting around playing video games, but rather he's not meeting a standard. He's not meeting some sort of standard. It could be a moral standard or it could be some other kind of standard that allows him to be redeemed. But the most powerful examples are usually an evil character deciding to be good. And the most important thing about that is that there has to be something which causes the character to change his mind about what he's doing. There has to be something that changes his perspective and makes him rethink uh, the evil perspective that he's already embraced. So it could be that uh, he does something particularly bad and realizes what he's doing is bad. It could be that um, what he's doing affects himself in a way that makes him rethink what he's doing like a, a drug addict or something like that. It could be that um, what he's doing negatively affects someone he loves and that makes him rethink about it. Uh, the point is most people are not going to reason themselves out of evil to good just on their own. Rather, the reasoning happens after some sort of inciting event. So just like with any plot arc, there's an inciting event. There's something that makes the characters react and have to solve a problem. The redemption arc is the character realizes he's evil and he has to solve that problem by changing his behavior and changing what he's doing, what he's doing in order to be good in some way. Um, this can be a, an A story or it can be a B story or it can be like a C story, a low level uh, plot element that solves the bigger problem of the plot like with Darth Vader suddenly killing the Emperor at the end of Return of the Jedi. That's a great redemption story um, because if you have like one of the worst people in the galaxy uh, finally being able to make the decision to walk away from evil and do like one good act that changes everything. Um, so that's a good example. Now, that's not the best example. The best example is actually the story of St. Paul, the conversion of St. Paul to Christianity. This is out of the Bible. And one of the reasons this is such a powerful story is that it has all of these uh, elements of redemption that we're going to talk about. And all of those elements of redemption are actually about the religion. So it reinforces the entire message of the Gospels. Um, so Paul is a bad guy. He's uh, persecuting the church and he's even participating in murder of disciples. So this is a guy who is bad. What is the inciting incident that causes him to be good? Well, he's on the road to Damascus and he has a vision of Jesus Christ. Saul, why do you persecute my church? So it's divine intervention. Now, a lot of people are not keen on divine intervention because they think of de uh, deus ex machina where like the god literally saves you from a problem but in this case it's an inciting incident and you could put that in your story if you wanted to you could have a some sort of divine force cause somebody to change what they're doing and the way that they're thinking about things so uh, he uh, has a vision of jesus christ he goes blind so now he has like a really immediate problem and who solves the blindness well it's a disciple of christ so Already he is being redeemed in a way by that which he has been persecuting and harming. Um, and that's really the message of the gospels, which is that you can be you can have all of your sins forgiven. So when Paul says, sinners of who I'm of whom I am chief, 
he's not speaking in hyperbole. Like he really is an arch sinner that has been fully redeemed. Not only fully redeemed, but becomes uh, in a lot of ways a post figurement of Christ. Both Peter and Paul have this. Not only, uh, and Peter, of course, is another redemption arc. He denies Christ three times. He denies the Lord and then becomes the first pope, right? Becomes the the foremost personality in the early church. And both him and Paul, um, in their post of Christ, they live out a Christ-like life, they do miracles, they spread the gospel, but they are martyred and they die. Now, in most writing, in most, I guess, stories, you wouldn't have the heroes get killed at the end. But in the context of the, the broader message of the gospels, being martyred in the exact same way that Christ was, uh, not in the exact same way because Paul was beheaded, not crucified, and Peter was crucified upside down. Um, so becoming a martyr in a similar way to Christ means that the full redemption is not just to go from being a bad guy to being a good guy, but to be so good and to follow uh, the example so closely that you even uh, suffered the exact same martyrdom uh, of your Lord, that you've completely follow Christ's example all the way to the end. So it's a great story of redemption. Now, um, this is one of the things that I think is hard about redemption arcs in modern the modern world is that most modern people, modern young people, don't really believe in forgiveness or redemption. So if somebody were to change their bad thing to being what they consider good, they would actually not accept that. They would not do what um, the church did for, for Paul, which was to not only accept him in and forgive his sins, but to have him be one of the foremost people in the church, to be an apostle, um, to be a, a real leader, someone who planted churches and had uh, a lot to say. That's why we. His, that's why his epistles are are uh, canonized in the Bible of the church because of how important they were. So to have that level of redemption arc in a modern world is almost impossible. So if somebody were to be a Nazi and to say, I'm going to stop being a Nazi and I'm going to be good and you'll write a story about that, uh, like American History X or something, I think that that story would, would be reprehensible to lots of young people today because they don't have any sense of forgiveness or redemption. Uh, if, if a person is to stop being a Nazi, it is they realize how bad it is and then they are killed for their for the evil of having a bad a perspective or for being a bad person. There's no redemption. There's nothing they can do to be forgiven or to make up for the bad things that they did or to show any kind of change of character. Uh, they should be killed or executed or tortured or imprisoned or whatever it happens to be. Um, this is, a, I guess, a particular affliction of our modern society is um, lack of forgiveness and lack of belief in redemption or people changing and things like that. Uh, but I still think that there's a lot of power to have that in your stories. Um, with like this best example being St. Paul, but there's many, many others I'm sure that you can think of. So when you are writing a redemption arc for a character, that's the most important thing. There has to be some inciting incident, like this road to Damascus kind of conversion that makes you completely reevaluate everything you're doing and uh, to have the character be afflicted by guilt. Um, you have sometimes a, a one of these standard save the cat plot arcs where you have this moment towards the end, um, kind of in the third act, where a character has this dark night of the soul where they stop and they reflect on their failings and uh, they have a moment where they feel like a failure and that they can't go on. And then they are presented with some ability to overcome the problem they've been able, unable to fix for the entirety of the plot and then are able to fix it to create the resolution for the plot. Well, the redemption arc kind of does this in reverse. The dark night of the soul comes first and then all of the other stuff happens after that. So the dark night of the soul happens with the inciting incident that makes you change everything about um, the way that you view the world if you're the, the fallen character. And then the rest of the plot is about trying to um, trying to redeem those faults. And there's lots of opportunity for drama in there because people can not accept the um, the redeemed person. They cannot trust them, which is, of course, valid. And uh, then you can have lots of surprises in the third act where maybe there's betrayal or it looks like betrayal, but it's not. Lots of things that you can have fun with with a redemption arc um, that uh, can make a really, really effective story. A lot of surprises and twists that you can put in, knowing that the character started evil and people are not going to trust him and that he may fall back into his evil ways. He may be tempted to go back to the way it was before. Um, so anyway... That's that. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Newest book is called...
Demon X Machina. You can get it on Amazon, I think, for $2.99. And I will see you all next time. Have a great one.